Hello and welcome back to CIS 165. This is Victor Campos. This is your instructor, Victor Campos. We're in week 13 now. And what I want to cover is something that's outside of the scope of the book. The book covers a lot of JavaScript and jQuery, but it doesn't cover any HTML and CSS. I do recommend you enroll in CIS 152 if you're interested in furthering your knowledge of HTML and CSS. But what I want to cover at the moment is a really quick, cool, and fun way to create HTML-powered projects that are mobile-friendly. So this lesson is going to focus on using jQuery Mobile to create mobile-friendly web projects. Now, you do hear the term jQuery in the name. This is jQuery Mobile. There's actually almost no JavaScript to write, but it's all HTML, and what it does is creates a mobile-friendly project. So we can see how quickly we can create something interesting right away. As usual, I'm going to create a new project folder for week 13, and I'm going to copy the index template file into it and open it up in Visual Code. We're going to work on week 13. I don't want anything in the body just yet, so we can remove this h1. And this script stuff here, we're not really going to do anything in it either, but I'll leave it there as is. Here's what we do need. We need a few libraries. Just like we use the jQuery library to use jQuery code, we're going to need the jQuery mobile library. We're going to need two the jQuery mobile CSS file and the jQuery mobile JavaScript file. First, the CSS file. If we back up to the head, we're going to add a link, an HTML link tag. It has no pair. We have rel, relationship, style sheet, and then href, pointing over to an online resource https code.jquery.com slash mobile slash 1.4.5 slash jquery.mobile dash 1.4.5.min.css. So this is pointing over to uh, the jQuery server. It's pointing to the to a CSS file that's been minified, version 145, jQuery Mobile, on the jQuery server. We need something very similar in JavaScript. So before the custom script, we're going to start another script pair with a source first to jQuery and then jQuery mobile. jQuery mobile needs to be built on top of jQuery, so we'll load our jQuery library first. This one's slightly different than the one we used before. jQuery.com slash jQuery dash one dot eleven dot one dot min dot js. We need this version of jQuery instead of the one we've used previously so that jQuery mobile is fully compatible. Next line, another script to another source, which is going to be very similar to the line above, so I'm just going to copy it, except it's pointing over to a JavaScript file instead of a CSS file. So make sure you change this to js.js. So line 6, I've got a link to the CSS file line 10 to jQuery, and line 11 to jQuery mobile. JS, make very sure that it's to the JS file. One more thing up on the head. Actually, I'll add it before that style sheet. We're going to add a meta tag. Name, viewport, content, initial, dash scale equal to one, 
comma user dash scalable equal to no comma with equal to device dash with so this is a mobile friendly viewport setting the viewport is the main visible area of a website so we're saying this website basically is going to be mobile friendly because we're going to have initial scale or the initial zoom level set to one or 100 percent we will say user zoom ability is off user scalable no and stretch out the width of the project to the devices with monitor cell phone tablet etc so with these four lines of code we've set ourselves up to create a mobile friendly project in html so in our body we will first create a section tag and visual code will tell you the section element represents a generic section of a document or application okay so we're going to have section opening close section on its own lines then header the header element represents introductory content for its nearest ancestor sectioning content or sectioning root element all right so then we've got header then we're going to have article the article element represents a complete or self-contained composition in a document page app or site and lastly footer the footer element represents a footer for its nearest ancestor sectioning content or sectioning root element all right so if i have something like here top of screen middle of screen bottom of screen section is a complete section of a website header article and footer are then the top middle and bottom of a section if I view this in the web browser it will not be very impressive yet but what I want to confirm is that there's no errors and it looks like I've got a little one here I've got a stray angle bracket that's because I wrote two here sorry single anyway load that up top of screen middle of screen okay that doesn't look too impressive you can F12 to see if there's any console errors everything looks fine okay well this is a section this is a section if you copy all of that code and paste it after itself what we're doing here is we're creating one screen full of content section and another screen full of content section so one screen of an app or website and another screen of a app or website looking at it in the browser however doesn't quite look that way until I incorporate the jQuery mobile code this code here is plain old HTML5 well here's how we can upgrade it because we've got jQuery mobile attached we can do this section inside of the section tag attribute data dash role equals quotes page now when I view it in the browser I only see the content of this first screen I've taken section and I've upgraded it with data role page and now it's a page full of content header data role we're going to use these data role attributes several times data role header saving that and viewing that gives me on the top area a top bar with that top content now I'm also resizing my screen a little bit just to kind of uh, show it to you sort of like in a tall and thin uh, mobile website sort of way let's say a mobile device something like that footer that has a data role as well of guess what footer and what happens is 
we have bottom of the screen. Actually, this needs one more attribute because it's not quite at the bottom of the screen. So data roll footer, data dash position, fixed. And now what happens is the footer is fixed to the bottom of the screen. Here's something else we can do in Chrome. We've been looking at our console, F12, this whole time. And next to it, we have elements. And next to it, we have this icon, toggle device toolbar. If you click that, we get a responsive view here on the left. Better yet, a Galaxy S5 simulation, a Nexus 5 phone simulation, an iPhone 6 Plus simulation. So I'll leave it on Nexus 5. But here, by turning on and off device toggle, it sort of looks like a mobile device. So now I've got top area, bottom area, middle area. It needs its own attributes. This one's a little different, however. It's not a data role. It is only role, main, and then a class attribute, UI-content. And the result of that is that the main content is a little bit offset off to the edges. Well, let me keep building this mobile project. Header should have an H1. So footer should have an H4. And what that does is now the top and bottom are centered. They have a little bit more space. They look like the top or the bottom of the screen. In the article, I can add in H2. And that looks big like that. So this is the first screen of my project. But wait a minute, I created a second screen, another section. So I want to go from this first section to the second section. We can create a cool nav bar, a navigation element, to go from this first screen to the next screen. So in the header, after H1, I will create a nav tag. And this is saying the nav element represents a section of a page that links to another page or to parts within the page, a section with navigation links. This needs a data role of nav bar. Now everything that I'm doing here, if you go visit jQueryMobile.com, you'll get the full documentation. And again, this is not in the book, but this is something that you should be looking at for the next assignment. So navbar is a collection of links in bullet points, unordered list. We then have a list item. You can say home, list item, page two. So this becomes a nav bar up at the top that is separated from the rest of the document. Well, these links should have active links. So we add the a tag, href pound, a tag, href pound, and what happens here is then now these become a little nicer looking like real buttons. That's clickable, that's clickable. And look at this, you get these effects without any extra programming. More effects that we can add are icons. Inside of the A tag, another attribute, data-icon. And I've got about 50 built-in icons such as home, which you can look up at jQueryMobile.com. Data-icon equals star. What happens here is that now I've got icons above my buttons. I can put them above, below, left and right, etc. if you read the documentation. Well, my point here is I want to be able to click on page two, and it goes to page two. I need to reference the unique identifier of each page. Well, the first section is a page, and it needs an ID. ID attribute home. 
Therefore, the home button is linked to pound home. Page two, which we can call anything we want, of course, but I'll call it page two. No capital letters, no spaces, is going to link to page two. Well, there's nothing actually called page two anywhere in the document. That is, there's nothing with an ID of page two, because this section is still very incomplete. So on this second section, data roll, page, ID, page 2. And now what I have, if I refresh here, is the ability to click on page 2, and I go to page 2, which has none of the styling and setup of page 1, not even a way to get back. This doesn't really do anything. So you see, this page has been upgraded. Both page 1, home, and page 2 use sections and headers and all of that stuff. But these look all plain until they're upgraded with data roles and such. So here's a trick. I'm going to copy the code now of this section and replace this code. It'll copy and paste because then now I've got a data role page, a data role header, a data role navbar, etc., etc. But I have to be very careful to change the ID of the second page now to page two. I cannot have more than one thing named ID, page two, or home. And we've used IDs for JavaScript, but we also use it here in jQuery Mobile to identify different pages. So what I can do here, middle of screen, could do page two content, page two footer, page two header, just to see something different. And when I save and refresh this, so I'm on page one, I click on page two, I'm on page two, I click on home, go back to page one. Did you notice the little fade animation between the first and second pages? We can change that as well. If I go back to home, and I go back to my page home, I have these links. I can further add more data attributes to change the links. So data-transition. And I have about six different types of animations here. For example, flip. And each one of them could be different if I want. Data-transition, let's say turn. So when I'm on the home screen and I click on page two, do you see that turn animation? If I go back, it turns back. I'm already on home, so nothing happens. If I go to page two, it turns. If I go back to page one, it does the fade animation because I didn't program page two with any of these animations. Right? I've got data transition flip and turn on ID home, but I don't have anything on page two data transitions. So let's say I'll copy, I'll copy flip. I'll put flip on both of the page two links. So from home to page two, and then from page two to home. I think I'll put data transition flip on all of them. That's a little, cons little more consistent. So now I have these cool flipping animations. Let's say I want to create a pop-up screen here from the home screen. So I'm going to need a brand new section. So after page two, brand new section. This one will be a little bit simpler than the other one. So instead of copying and pasting, I'll write it manually. Section, data role, page, ID, info,
header, data role, header, h1, info, that's what will appear on screen, article, role, main, class, ui-content, and we can do an h2 here, some info. I won't put a footer. I want a slightly different view. What's going to be different also is we've got a data role of page. And I'll add a data-dialog true. I want this to behave like a dialog pop-up box. So I want a button from the home screen to open this pop-up screen. I'll add that back on home screen, home section, in the header. After my nav bar, but still inside the header, we'll add an A tag as a link called info, href, pound info. So we need the pound sign, which represents an ID. That new section had an ID of info, so it's pound info, href, the link data dash icon, maybe we could do user data dash icon pos equals no text. So I want only the icon, not the text of info. I want the user icon. Data dash transition equals pop. I want the pop animation when you click this icon. And then a class, ui-btn-write. I want the icon to appear to the right of this nav bar. Checking the result, it gives me an icon here. I click on that user icon, I get a pop-up, some info, with an automatic close button. So again, I like being inside of the Chrome device toggle. If I don't have that turned on, it's fine. It looks OK. You know, if I don't have F12 active, it looks like this, like a wide tablet. It still behaves like I expect. But I'm having this at the moment a little bit taller and thinner, F12, and then turning on the device toolbar so I can look like an actual device. There's a page two. There's a home. There's a pop-up screen. Now, all of this is happening behind the scenes because jQuery Mobile is taking my data attributes and converting them, basically. We'll do one more. Let's say in page two, I want to click a button so that a side panel appears on the edge, left edge or right edge. So this is going to be new content added to page two. If I find my page two section right here, anywhere inside of the section, but oftentimes at the end, after the header, article, and footer, I'm going to create a brand new set of side information. This is the aside tag. Data role. Panel. ID. You can call it side panel. And here I can write some info. So this is a side panel that I want to appear by clicking a button inside of page two. So let's say back up to the article. I can say click for the side panel. New paragraph, a tag, side panel. A tag has the href pointing to the pound side panel. Right, that's the name of that side panel. So when I view that in the browser, I have a new button, side panel, a new link, click on that, side panel, whatever content there appears. I can click, and it goes back. Now that looks like a plain old link. I want it to look like a nice button. So once again, I'm going to take plain old HTML and upgrade it. Data-role, button. So then that looks more like a button data dash icon, info, I get a variety of buttons to choose from, camera for example, 
Again, you can get all of this from jQueryMobile.com. So the homework assignment will be based on this, using jQuery Mobile to create an interface and a basic website. You just need to know a few tags with a few attributes, and you get these great results. You get this cool mobile-friendly project. So looking at jQueryMobile.com, that's the manual. This is what you're going to read this week. You're going to go through this site, you'll look at the demos, documentation, resources, etc., the blog. And that's what you're going to read and then create a project on. I would recommend going over to demos, latest version, 145, and looking at this. You don't have to read every single thing because you might not need to know how to create a range slider or a loader and such, but it's all here. How does the nav bar work? What are the icons? So for example, you open up icons, you go to icons here, and you'll see these are all the possible icons. Data role, data icon equals action, arrow u, caret d, calendar. And then in your code, you add it, and then you see the result. Calendar. So based on jQuery Mobile, you will have an assignment. Make sure to check online to see exactly what it is to get full credit. This has been Victor Campos. See you next time.